you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey, it's Sunny, and welcome to episode 14. Wow. Half of this year is officially already behind us. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? The concept of time seems much different when we are in the space that we're in. It might be flying for you, or it may be dragging like crazy. Is it over yet? And I want to speak to those of you today that are swimming around in thoughts of the latter. Can this just be over? Because right now, I'm just going to give it to you straight. There is no end in sight. And what exactly are you waiting for? I had a friend post recently that he couldn't wait for the pandemic to end so he can get back to living life or something along those lines. Wait, the exact words are, when this pandemic is over, I'm going to enjoy the hell out of life. No more taking things for granted. And I thought, wow, this is where some of us are, just waiting for everything to go back to the way it was before we can move forward with living. You know what? There's no better time than right now to start living your best life. I know when all this began, there seemed to be two distinct camps, as there seems to be with just about everything these days. Pick a side. It's not this or that, no in between. And the camps I'm thinking of in this context include those of us whose lives were disrupted on some level. That either meant working from home, thrust into homeschooling if you have children, Or maybe you've always been home and suddenly your spouse and all of the kids are home. Either way, there was a change, but this change doesn't necessarily encompass essential workers, which is a whole other category for sure. Within this group that I'm talking about, there did seem to be those two distinct camps in the beginning. Either I'm going to use this time to wrap myself in a cocoon catch up on Netflix, or I'm going to use this time to completely transform. I'm going to do all of the things I've been putting off. I'm going to focus on fitness, learn a new language, better myself. And everyone had an opinion about which path was the right one, because we seem so very consumed with what's right and wrong, don't we? Again, this was at the start of the pandemic and before all of the racial injustices that have been brewing beneath the surface forever had been painfully exposed. We were just focused on the pandemic. It's July, you all. Because that's still very much in play, I want to suggest that there could very well be a space in between to explore, yet so very powerful that the opportunity for growth is limitless. If you're feeling pandemic fatigue right about now, there seems to be a high probability that we just need to settle in to this new normal and start accepting that our lives may never go back to the way they were. And also that there may not be anything wrong with that. Let's remove the notions of what is right or wrong for a bit and just look at where we are 
and the potential that we have to evolve ourselves. Let's learn how to manage our damn minds. I mean, now is as good a time as any time. Now is the best time of all. If you can learn how to do this during all of this social upheaval, then you can manage that mind of yours for the rest of your time here. It's time to start. The year is half over. And for those of you out there who are done with 2020 and you just want to wake up from the nightmare, I'd like to challenge you to look inward instead. There is a gold mine of opportunity just waiting for you if you're willing to see it. My inspiration for this episode was seeing a young woman a few days ago here in Dallas of all places at a grocery store who threw an absolute temper tantrum over being told she had to wear a mask. She started emptying her cart by throwing all of the items on the floor of the store. I think it was a fiesta market. Now, I wasn't actually there to witness this. I just saw the clip on social media, news media. Maybe you've seen it too. It's something to see. You might have a thought about it, as I did, like, She's behaving like a child, really. Or you may have had the thought good for her. Being told to wear a mask is a form of oppression. No one should be able to make you, etc. But let's go with the child analogy, because whether you're aware of it or not, there is an emotional child living in your brain. She's there just waiting for the opportunity to start throwing shit when she doesn't get her way. Children are really good at feeling their feelings. That's why they yell, cry, scream, and throw themselves on the floor when things don't go their way. They're really feeling it. And it doesn't matter if you have kids of your own. You can't have gotten this far in life without being exposed to the drama they sometimes bring, like in the grocery store. Yes, they are masterful at feeling their feelings until they are conditioned around what behaviors are acceptable in public and, of course, at home. While they are still learning, though, most kids get away with a lot. They know how to feel, but they don't yet know how to manage their feelings. Kids don't know a lot of things while they're doing this whole growing up exercise, but their little minds are pliable and they are learning. They also do stupid shit like the toddler in your brain. I've been stuck with this visual ever since I heard Brooke Castillo say that an unmanaged mind is like a toddler with a knife It is not advisable, not advisable to allow a toddler to run around with a knife. Also, not advisable to continue functioning, no matter how well that you believe you're doing so. Not advisable to function in this world with an unmanaged mind. And honestly, I can't think of a better visual. So that's what I'm going with. I've touched on emotional childhood in earlier episodes, and today I want to give this concept a highlight because it really is important and something that we need to be aware of on this path to mind management, which is going to include some self-discovery, some self-awareness, and now is the perfect time to dive in. All you have to do is decide that it is. When we talk about emotional childhood, what we really mean is that we are behaving as children, not taking responsibility for our feelings. 
very young children aren't capable of understanding the concepts that I talk about here, that your thoughts create your feelings, not everyone else around you, not the circumstances out in the world, not COVID-19, not the politicians, not the protesters. Yet it's from a place of emotional childhood that we look for someone else to blame. I would feel better if, if the virus would just go away, if the protesters would settle down, if the government would step up and be good parents or stand down and leave everyone alone. Everyone has an opinion about what everyone else can do to make them feel better. That is emotional childhood, my friends. Yet, as I've relayed here before, giving responsibility of your feelings over to someone else is surrendering your power because you do not, cannot, nor will you ever be able to control another human being beyond yourself. That's what emotional childhood is. It's blaming everyone or everything else for how you feel. It's also having the expectation that if everyone would just do what you want them to do, or everything would just fall into place so your world is right again, then you could be happy. Then you could move forward. Then you could take the time to grow. It's like the toddler. She has an expectation that her needs are going to be met by the adults in the room. And those needs don't have to be realistic. In her undeveloped toddler brain, she may think it's perfectly logical that the candy in the checkout lane of the grocery store will bring her joy. After all, she's had a taste of it before. She sees the pretty colors on the wrappers. And the role of the adult is to fulfill her needs. So she's going to pitch a fit until she gets what she wants. And if she doesn't get what she wants, it's the adult's fault. 100%. It's that simple, really. There's a version of this toddler living in your brain. That's the part of you that not only wants to lash out at everyone and everything around you that you disagree with or that you believe is the cause of all your frustration. It's also the part of you that gives in to cravings, to urges to run to the pantry or to the liquor cabinet whenever that desire appears. This is what I want going to throw a tantrum if I don't get it. I'm going to throw my shit out of the grocery cart. I am going to make a scene. Or I'm stressed and I don't want to feel that stress anymore. Let's numb it away with ice cream or wine. Maybe both. It's all of that. It's avoiding the negative feelings because we've been conditioned that it's not acceptable to throw tantrums. So let's suppress them with something else. Distract ourselves from them. Numb them away for the moment. Let's scream at other people because we don't like the rules. Make a scene, whatever. Where's the adult in the room? Well, that's where you have to bring that questioning into play that I continue to talk about. This emotional adult adult takes responsibility for her feelings. She knows that they are generated from her thoughts about other people and things going on in the world, her thoughts about herself. She knows that she has to manage her brain just as she would if she were caring for a toddler who simply doesn't know better yet. She has to be the voice of reason the emotional adult. Now, you always have choices. You can give in to your desires that you have that are ultimately avoiding the root cause of your pain, or you can feel your feelings and take ownership of them. Which do you think is more empowering? 
Yes, it's disempowering to allow your inner emotional child to control your thoughts all day. That seems obvious. But it isn't obvious because no one has taught us how to manage our damn minds, have they? And it's where all your power is and no one teaches us how to use it because they didn't really know either. It's crazy. I think most of us can grasp this intellectually, but putting it into practice is the real challenge. However, you're up for the challenge because you have decided that you aren't going to keep going down this path anymore. You're done with the excuses that we're in a pandemic that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon and that the world is crazy. That's coming from a place of emotional childhood and you are done with that. You know that there really are no excuses other than the discomfort that comes with growth. So chalk it up to growing pains, call it what you will, buckle up buttercup and let's get to work. No more excuses. No more wishing everything was back to normal. And I'm using air quotes, normal, whatever that even means. And trying to find ways to avoid this self-exploration. You know it's not going to be easy, but also that it's not supposed to be. Life is 50-50. You're going to feel negative emotions about half of the time. There's no getting out of that. There's no escape button there. That's the balance and you're here for all of it. That's becoming an emotional adult. And I'm telling you, once you scratch the surface of what's possible, a whole new world opens up for you. One that isn't required to be just the way that you thought it should be, but the new world of you. The part of you inside that knows it's going to be okay no matter what because you have your own back all of the time, every damn day. My friends, you have to question your thoughts relentlessly with practice and over time. This becomes an easier exercise, but when you're just starting out, it's going to be a bit more challenging to pick out those sneaky thoughts that creep in uninvited. You think that your thoughts are a part of you because they always have been there, but they're not. They're just thoughts. You don't have to act on them or react to them. The best thing to do is question them. Ask yourself, is it true? When you have the thought, that guy pisses me off. I'm not good enough to do that. I can't take any more. I need a drink. Are any of those things true? That guy may behave a certain way, but it's your thoughts that make you feel pissed. You were born worthy. You are still worthy. So of course you're good enough. You can do hard things. You can amaze yourself at the things you're capable of. If you're willing to put in the work, you don't need a drink. You need to feel your feelings. That first round of statements comes from a place of emotional childhood, while the alternate responses come from emotional adulthood. Do you see the difference? And how you start to get there is you continue to ask the question, is it true? From where? Compassion and curiosity. Yep, my favorite place. I want to be very clear when I speak to you about this today, that emotional childhood is not necessarily a bad thing because you're going to automatically go to that place. Well, I've done something bad. Damn, no, you haven't. That's your social conditioning talking. That's your emotional child. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not black. It's not white. It's not wrong or it's not right. I want you to simply acknowledge that this child exists in each of us. Know this because the first step is admitting that you have a problem, right? 
(laughs) You don't actually have a problem, not at all. You just have a child in your brain that is constantly seeking attention and constantly seeking validation that she's doing the right thing, that she's going to get that approval. We can even think of it in terms of anti-racism work that some of us may have chosen to approach in light of recent events. You know how all of your black friends are suddenly saying, do you want a cookie for doing the right thing? Well, that's just their way of acknowledging that a part of you is still a child seeking that approval. Am I doing it right? If you've been listening to other episodes by now, you should know that I'm constantly saying this is not about right or wrong. This is no different. It's simply a different perspective, a different way to approach yourself with a sense of awareness of this child within and to become the parent. Even if you aren't a parent in real life, that's not what this is about. You have full authority. I'm giving it to you right now. You have absolute authority to become the emotional adult that your brain so desperately needs you to be. I don't care if you don't have a great role model. I don't care if you don't know how to be a parent. Let me explain something to you right here and right now. When you are holding an infant in your arms and every fiber of your being is screaming, I don't fucking know how to do this. You figure it out because many, many parents before you have figured it out and they have been scared. They have been downright terrified. They may not have had parents before them to show them the way or tell them what to do. They may not have had a swarm of friends to throw a party about the fact that they're pregnant in the first place. They may not have had the best living conditions. They may have been trying to just make it work in a world that doesn't seem to work. I mean, let's just be honest. I have spoken openly about my struggles with infertility on this podcast, and I've also spoken openly about having an 11-year-old son. Well, that amazing boy is adopted, and today... The day that I'm recording this is his gotcha day, July 1st. Adoptive parents know this one. Today is the day that the courts made it real. When he was nine months old, they gave him our last name. And I still remember the judge saying, this is like another birthday for you. You are reborn. This is the day that you became this version of you. But I also know what it was like to take an infant home from the hospital and to be fucking terrified about it. To think, I don't fucking know what to do. I don't know how to parent this human that can't even speak. (laughs) You figure it out. You figure it the fuck out. We all do. That's what our parents do. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter if you gave birth to another human or if you were honored as I am honored to have been chosen to parent another human that you didn't give birth to. Or if you have no idea whether or not you ever want to be a parent, you can still be that guide to yourself. You really and truly can. I believe that because I've seen that room and I've walked that floor. Every single one of us is born worthy. Yes. Every single one of us is also born capable of loving ourselves, of caring for our self, of honoring our self, of being the emotional adult for ourself. If you want to know where you can find that light, that space, that capacity and capability inside of you, then we should talk. This is what I do. I'll help you find it. 
So what I want you to take from this episode is not that I am admonishing you for having not yet done the work. I want you to know that I am acknowledging you for your ability to do the work. Even if you don't yet see it, I see it. Because you can. Because anyone can. Find yourself. See yourself. Be yourself. As Rumi says, stop acting so small. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. This is the work. This is how you find your light. I love you unconditionally. Try loving yourself the same. I promise you, it feels amazing. I'm Sunny the Life Coach. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Sunny the Life Coach. Please share my podcast with your friends as this is completely organic and it is my goal to keep it that way. I appreciate your support. Light up and shine on. 